So after last season's relative disappointment on the domestic side of things, we really do have that in the forefront of our mind this season because this is, of course, about winning leagues and that's what we've got to try to find a way to do. But overthrowing Molder is not going to be easy by any means when the financial clout they have vastly dwarfs us by an extremely large amount. However, today we try to build a squad with what little money, really, the board have left and also concentrate on some European knockout fixtures. Nice and easy, eh? Let's get cracking. As always, if you have been enjoying the series up to this point, drop a like on the video. That would be fan bloody dabby dozy. Um, now, uh, uh, this. I literally went forward one day, uh, or uh, technically two days, and the board have decided, you know what? Wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be great? Just hear me out. If instead of getting the club in a financially stable position, and just, you know what, having a nest egg, just in case something could go wrong, polar storm, whatnot, or in the Arctic, they decided instead, no, let's spend a quarter of the money that we have on expanding the stadium again. And that's great in practice. Yep, we get an extra 1,600 people in for grounds for the European games, probably. Fantastic work, lovely stuff. Except, of course, it does mean that they're going to be even more likely to do more silly nonsense come this transfer window. I wouldn't be surprised if it cuts to the end of January and I'm sat there going, well, the board have sold Kauki Koamoto for a packet of crisps, uh, hopefully that's not the case, but it always worries me when they start spending money that we really don't have, particularly when we need to make some transfers. <laughs> and also, in extra news, the facilities have now been downgraded. <laughs> you know, could have maybe used the money on that, eh? Maybe? I daren't ask the board to increase the training facilities because they'll probably say yes. And I'm actually worried if they do that we'll have no money left at all in the world. We'll end up busking at the bottom of Fjellheis and trying to take money off the people going up the cable car at this rate. Before we fully get started, I, I tried to see if we could get Lee Dilly back because I have decided on a couple of little tactical ideas for next season. One of which, obviously, we talked about in the Napoli game. Game, uh, those of you that saw it at the very end of the last video, which was the idea of passing more often, i.e. dribbling less. Because I did notice that we weren't really utilising our dribbling that often anyway, for the most part. And when we did, it seemed to cost us the ball. So I wonder if a more pass-heavy strategy with players in key positions, because a lot of our good stuff comes from those little interchanges. So trying to force that a little bit more might not be the worst idea in the world. And looking for those long passes, but more organically, could be the answer. The other thing I thought about, and I think this will heavily depend on who we end up signing as a striker for us, back to two advanced forwards. Now, it didn't work initially because Indistad could not do that role. That was not his cup of tea. He was very very good as a deep line forward and it worked well within us. However, I do wonder if two solid advanced forwards could actually give us way more attacking options and less one dimensional so we're always forcing it down the left hand side for those attacking chances. Uh, we've still got Rakic sat there as the advanced playmaker. Potentially could change him into a Trek though. Not opposed to that because I do like some Treks this year. I've got thoughts about it but I do still feel like there's more we can get out of this tactic to make this team work a little bit better but that's what we're going to try to ascertain over this window whilst also trying to pad out the squad with some new signings. We need to know who's going to be here before we start bringing in people to then be here. So, uh, let's get going, I guess. The reason I bring up Dilly is because I decided, you know what? Chelsea have let us have him for 3.3k a week. It's good. He's done half a season and he's been okay, honestly. Six and six in the Europa Conference League, only one in the league. So I decided, what, what could go wrong if I try to put another loan bid in? See if we can get him out for next season. That'd be nice. He's not going to play for Chelsea at this point, let's be honest. They're not going to play him. They've probably got about 17 strikers that are just as good as he is. And then I was presented with this. Oh, how the times change. Firstly, they want us to pay £30,000, sorry, £10,000 a week of wages and a further £13 million, rising to potentially £27 million if he doesn't play and a further £43 million. I think we're going to be in for a very, very long winter here in Tromsø. Just look at some new contracts with some of the players to get this sort of stuff done. Also, um, we've had a bid of a loan extension accepted for Velej, which would be really good. He was excellent this year, provided us a real goal threat and enabled us to get goals in games where the rest of the squad just wasn't functioning. So really useful to have on board. Uh, so far, we've managed to get contracts out there for Sergio, Johansson, Nordheim, Henriksen, the youngsters, basically, which is awesome to tie them down. Long-term deals. Tikkanen as well. Uh, I've also offered one to Thomas Blad. Luckily, he didn't want much more money than he's already on. I think it went up to 2800 which is fine for a four-year extension. James Gomez, on the other hand, is a weird one. Contract expires at the end of next season. He's currently on an impact sub-playing time role at the moment, but when I try to extend his contract, he wants star player minimum. Minimum, as if I can offer more than star player. What do you want, James? Like, do you want to buy it? Do you want to extend the stadium too? So needless to say, that might be one that has to go on the back burner because he's demanding an insane contract for a player that isn't actually playing all that often for us at the moment. With Solskjaer leaving at the end of the season as well, we definitely are going to need to bring a few more guys through. I feel like Sergio is going to get some more first team game time this year because he's an excellent young centre back, needs football. I think he could be the next guy that comes through our ranks, really. But that's the play for now. Okay, weirdly, Solskjaer has just had a go at me for not completing a promise to loan him out. We obviously tried to loan him out. We're not in a transfer window. What was he expecting me to do exactly? There is no. What transfer window is open on the 11th of December, Henrik, that I could possibly loan you to? 
Uh, your contract's up in a month anyway, so I don't really care what you say. Okay, so you can see that I've been doing quite a lot of scouting over the past year. I'm using the same kind of methods I've been using at uh, Treaty United, just with slightly less overall, like, youth scouting and whatnot, just by filtering some players through. Needless to say, there's some quality in here. The biggest of that quality is still Philipp Knudsen. He's, he's so good. Like, were I to be able to source the signing of Lee Dilly, Knudsen is the type of guy that I would be potentially willing to go after at that point as the sort of final cog in the machine in our centre midfield, because I actually think he could change that role massively. And I realise that there were probably comments on the last video, which I haven't had a chance to check yet, about how, oh, you should sign him, or you definitely shouldn't sign him. That's the problem. That's the conundrum we find ourselves in with a player like this. To give it a couple of weeks until the January transfer window opens, or at least till the end of December, to see if we can find anybody else, as well as see if I can find some way to get Chelsea to change their mind on Dilly. One of the things that I often find happens with clubs like Chelsea, as you saw from the fact that we got him so cheap originally, is sometimes they'll want, literally, from day to day, they could want either what we pay before, 300, what was it, 3,300 pound a week, that's it, or they want 50 million pounds for the season. It changes from day to day. It's been a day. Maybe they'll change their mind. <laughs> they changed their mind. It's been a day. I'll explain in a second. Ah, slight problem. Roberto Velez has rejected the loan offer from us now. Attempts to sell him. Hang on, sorry. <laughs> it's been two days. <laughs> I promised to sell him two days ago, and now he's unhappy that I haven't sold him yet. <laughs> Sorry, what were you expecting me to do, Henrik, in two days? Look, unhappy promise not kept, so I promised to sell him. Hands in transfer request, two days later, unhappy hasn't been sold. That's impressive. And what can I even tell you now? You need to be winning league titles and realistic. Mate, you're not winning league titles. You're barely getting in our squad, and we're not winning league titles, buddy. Why does he keep talking about not wanting to wait? Mate, your contract expires in two weeks. Just pipe down for a bit, bud. I'll let you go. Nothing. Players just blank staring at me. I've never seen that before. What is this? Watch him join HJK or something. Okay. So quite the turnaround. Dilly's back. Also, he accepted the loan bid, but Roberto Velas didn't. So, okay. So it's not exactly the same. It's nearly seven grand a week. So what I did basically was I went back in and took away the mandatory fee and replaced it with that same optional fee, the 77 million pounds or whatever that we had from last season, which was the original deal they'd agreed to. And then I put the wage contribution down one notch to 20%, or was it 10%? Regardless, whatever it was, it was that. And then they accepted it. It was like it was technically, they'd have basically accepted last year's deal again. It's just they wanted a slightly different one and wanted the mandatory fee in it too. But they went for the optional one again of 77 million. Not that it matters. We ain't going to pay it anyway. But that was their choice. So we'll take that. Lee Dilly's back for the full season. The difficult situation we've got really at the moment is unless I find a really high quality homegrown talent, you might notice that this is kind of lacking in those at the moment. That's where the problems kind of lie because we don't know how many slots we're going to have available next season. That's the issue for non-homegrown players because it is going to be really, really tough for us to fit those guys in. Okay, we might just hit on a bit of luck here. Burke Steenson, trained in Norway, plays for Porto, solid midfielder great passing great technique solid physicals finishing's trash not that that matters solid composure very brave good physicals i think if we could get someone like burke steenson in straight off the bat get that loan sorted out really really good piece of business for us potentially if we get him through i think he's a solid option and for a loan signing that would be fantastic reasonably good on both feet as well rages aren't super high but the point is he's available for loan we have to get this done now i think okay so they'll only let's have him for five months annoyingly uh, i'm not going to play him as an advanced playmaker just that's not happening oh they actually went for it holy god clubs are getting more lenient when you take out these roles now i'm noticing that's very good uh 3800 not even his full wage we get burke steenson in i think that's good it'll be a homegrown player central midfielder fills that gap a little bit plus it's another porto player they we get bam then we give them bamba back and now we get a better player hopefully that's the dream right there's this guy sigve rongved at Mulder. Um, would be an interesting option for us just because he could cover centre-back and even technically wing-back should we need him to, and particularly wide centre-back. Problem being is that they won't let us loan him. He could be interesting. The money wouldn't be too high. The other player I'm looking at for homegrown is this guy, Nikolai Berntsen of Volarenga. Would probably be available cheaper. 6'2", better jumping reach though. Great marking, really good defensive like tent poles. Bravery solid, aggression is solid. Uh, he's just a fabulous centre-back is Nikolai Berntsen. I mean, we could always get both of them if the money was right. It would depend heavily on how much money Volarenga want. 2.9 million is the max end. If we could get him for like midway in there, maybe 1.5, I would probably do that. Let, let's see though. Let's ask his agent. Right, I'm not going to use him as preferred role. Challenge for the title in a couple of steps. But that's what we're trying to do anyway. That's a lot of um, stuff. But at the very least, we've got Champions League football, which he does like. Oh, that's like, brilliant. 300k to 2.9 and they want 5.7 million pounds. Excellent work, agent. Is he worth 3 million pounds is my question. What I might do is try to get this bid accepted first, which they actually have. It might have gone even lower, actually. 
and try and go for that Molder guy and then just sort of see which deal looks best to us financially at that point because we really do need to get some extra homegrown talent coming in this season. I think that's absolutely imperative for this year to get some really quality players in those positions. Our assistant manager has informed me that Molder have shown interest in signing Rod... You're interested in him? Player exchange, maybe? Do they not negotiate with you? It might just be because they refuse to sell him to us anyway. But I wonder if they don't negotiate back when you try to add a player in. There's also this guy, Oliver Birkeland at Starbeck, who's very good. I mean, just look at him. Physicals, mentals, solid technicals, great passing. He could sit in here with Heinrichich. We could play him deeper as the C8. Even there, he would do a job. The fact is, he could even do a job as a ball-winning midfielder with his okay tackling. Positioning's trash, so wouldn't want to put him there, but he's very versatile. Heck, he could even do a job as a left wing back uh, for this team. I wonder if he'd be worth it just on account of the versatility of the man. Now, the money is all over the shop. 550k, it's literally, that's 10 times the price. Napoli, okay, right. There's a quality player here. Tell you what, I don't laugh love coming into a transfer window with players already scouted and ready to go. This is, it's almost like I should have done this years ago. Imagine, wants to play in the Champions League, which is fair. Wages is absolutely fine. Like, what does that even, that's such a huge gap. And watch them want like 10 million pounds, even though th this is, like, right, let's see how good these agent offers actually stack up shall we <gasps> no way hang on a minute that's surprisingly cheap and if we get in before napoli and the transfer window opens this could be an absolute coup for us usually that means we can get in for about 2.3 million pounds in total i reckon if i restructure this so it's like 1.5 up front and another mil maybe we could get in for 2.5 in installments perhaps let's just see if this works so it's 2.5 million but 1.5 is paid up front the rest is paid over the next five years let's see if they go for this ha <laughs> Come on. Literally, 1.5 million for a player of this quality up front. I think I'll probably take that. If we sneak this guy in before Napoli get their hands on him, he would be an absolutely brilliant signing for me. Uh, already homegrown, don't have to worry about it. He could play wing back, he could play attacking mid, he could play both of our central midfield roles to go along with it. He's the ultimate utility man. And then ideally, if we get a nice bed built up with these guys, it would then mean that later in the window, we could potentially shop for someone like one of these guys instead uh, to sort of be the icing on the cake, potentially, uh, of type of signing, really. I mean, look at this guy here. Buster Mith Mathiasen Thinson. Uh, training Denmark, sadly. But, you know, if there's a slot available and you get the opportunity to sign a guy, you never know, really, do you? So the offer for Berkstein has been accepted is interesting. Important player, which he absolutely would be. Three million pounds is a lot, but if we landed both him and Birkeland, both of whom, oh no, it's different clubs, aren't they? Okay, so he's got a lot of other clubs there, all Italian, but none of them are bid for him yet, which is cl clever. There's something about Bernson I just really like. I think he's just a really solid centre-back. I think he'd do an excellent job in that middle role for our centre-backs, just winning headers, dominating in the air. Uh, him and Velej and Blad and Leas doing what a pair, what a, like a quartet those four could be, rotating around, giving us some extra quality. We'll see how much he wants in wages. Okay, so challenge for the top. Right, so this is not happening. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, he didn't want... We got rid of that stuff straight off the bat. So 3.4 to 4.9. That's cool. Plus, we've got 14 guys trained at club and we only have to register two. So that's fantastic news. 3.9k a week. I think for someone like Nikolai Berenson, that's a pretty solid deal for us, to be fair. We've got the money. We need another centre-back and he's homegrown. It just feels like the perfect scenario. And in case Thomas Blad went away as well, there is always the potential for that. Birkelon, though, is the one I'm really excited about. He's accepting an impact sub and his agent dislikes me, so we've got to be careful here. I'll sweeten his agent with a little extra agent fee on top. Okay, he's gone for it. 2.3k, four-year contract. Um... Gave his agent a little bit extra on the top, try to sweeten him up a little bit. But if we land both of these, I'll be happy. Shit. That is a problem. Milan and all the bloody Italian sides have come circling on Birkeland now. I'm going to change the contract to give him a better squad status in the hope that that will change things. Oh, except I can't. Promises? Can I? Oh, I actually... That's annoying. I can't change his playing time. I've massively upped our contract offer for him because I really want this guy de desperately. And I think the deal we've got in place would be a really good one. So I think with that in mind, since we're clearly not getting the guy from Mulder, I want to sign Nikolai Berenson. Even though the fee is a little bit high for my liking, I just think we kind of need to get an extra guy in there and he's homegrown. Well, there we go. He's joined Napoli for... Well, actually, in total, less money and on a worse deal. I offered him £4,000 a week. Uh, it feels Napoli's squad is much stronger than ours. Yes, it is. That's why you won't be playing in it, you melon. Maybe we could get him a loan off Napoli. Baldo Bamba's contract expires at the end of this season for Porto. And I just thought, you know what? He's earning a mi he's earning like a grand a week or 1.4k a week at Porto. And I thought, you know what? Let's, let's see if I can get him in really cheap on a free. Man's demanding 16,000 quid a week and a half a million pound signing on fee. Mate, you're lucky I let you back into Norway after the way you've behaved. And by that, I just mean in front of goal. That's extremely ridiculous. Holy God, Kawamoto just won Asian Footballer of the Year. Half an hour later, this has happened. Oh, good. I can't wait for this to be an absolute nonsense fest. So he's basically interested in joining everybody. 
And luckily, they're going to bid no money for him as well, which is also great. So that does give us a bit of leeway. Two more Norwegians coming in, and that will leave us two spots in the squad for homegrown or non-homegrown players. Because I think we could actually do a lot with that money if we start shopping in South America for a little bit and could really strengthen this team with the right signings. But we've got to be careful, just in case the board do any silly nonsense with the Kawamoto stuff. We're secure financially. 11 million quid in the bank nearly, because of all the other stuff. We should be in a stable position this season if we could just find a couple more players to really stack this team out. And I've got options for days, my friends. This is bare funny. So now that Birkelon's at Napoli... Also, I was wrong about his wage. He's actually on 5k a week at Napoli, which is more than we offered him, in fairness. Um, but he was immediately listed for loan. The hilarious thing is, they want to put an optional fee in of 3.3 million pounds. What? You've just... All right, I actually think that the loan deal would actually be worth it for us personally. I wanted him in the first place. If I have to make it a loan deal, I do. He still counts as homegrown Norwegian anyway, and that would make our lives even easier. It's still cheekier, the fact that they steal him out from underneath us and then they go, hey, 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 do you fancy loaning him now? Oh my God. Christopher Lisa just been released by Atalanta. Not Atalanta, Atlanta United. And he's free. Now he's wanted by Malma, but I'll tell you what, that's a player. And he's Norwegian. Uh, trained in England and Norway. I think he could really give us another option as a striker. Uh, a bit of both. He actually could be more deep line forward if we needed him to and wanted to switch back. But look at that composure. He's so good. Surely we have to try it, right? Regular starter. Oh my God. Hang on a minute. He might actually be affordable. What's his uh, national team caps? No national team caps. He could be affordable. The wage demand is what possibly could get us here, though. It says 9 to 12k, which is far too much for us. But wangles can be done as long as we don't trigger that clause with Koki Kawamoto. Plus, this would also save us some time if Kawamoto was poached by someone else during this same window. Picking up this guy on a free 13k. The most I can offer is 10. Kawamoto is obviously on more than that, or less than that, rather. But that's fine. I can structure this deal. I feel like it would be worthwhile for us, honestly. I've actually managed to get him down to 10k. Now, that would trigger Koki Kawamoto's match highest earner clause, but only by, like, 250 quid a week. So... It really, at that point, doesn't really matter. It's almost like a, a little cheeky wage rise for Kawamoto. But it's the fact that he's free and he's that good. Feels like, it, if nothing else, the value he would bring to the club upon joining us would be worth the signing on fee of uh, 300 grand and his, his wage. Because then we'd have three absolutely ridiculous strikers. Plus, he can operate in central attacking midfield if we need him to. He can actually play in other roles in this team too. He's trained as a centre mid. Maybe he is the answer to our prayers in that central midfield role as well. Surely we have to do this and hope Malmö don't come in. Birkeland is in. Not quite the way we would have wanted it to happen, but it is going to happen nevertheless. And it's a loan, so if it doesn't work out, we don't have to keep him. More offers for Kawamoto here. Uh, so we're going to have to sort of go with a cheeky one here and try to run through the checklist of trying to keep hold of a player. Firstly, his value is minimum 5.6 and nobody's offering even barely even half that at the moment. So for the moment, this is a standard reject, which of course is him getting upset. Standard. Wants to move to Roma. Should have joined him in the first place then, Koki. Doesn't appear as though the talking to the players thing's going to work. No. Okay, so that's fine. So he, he is a, an influential player. Right, influential player? Didn't like that. I'm not that influential. Disagree, but whatever. Yeah, no. And in that case, we're just going to have to annoy him then. Wait for the window to expire. Hopefully, he'll change his mind. Oh my goody aunt. £91,000, essentially, plus the 300k. We basically signed Christopher Lisa for £400,000. This striker for £400,000. Doesn't like big matches, but for the most part, I found that is completely irrelevant. So few games actually get considered big matches that loves overhead kicks too. I, I just think it's impossible to say no to this guy for that price, particularly when you look at what he could do as an advance. Like, he could even tackle. It's just, he's everything. Like, he's now here. Immediately comes in and is worth nearly five, six million pounds just on a free transfer. I know it's a lot of money, but just, I mean, you have to, don't you, at that point, right? Why on earth was he released by Atlanta United? Incredible. Came through at Manchester United, interestingly. So we've got him, Bernson, Steenson, and Birkeland, all of whom are Norwegian homegrown players. I'll be honest with you. I feel like we've smashed it, this transfer window, and we still have another three million pounds left. Now, you've got to be careful, obviously, because of the board, but I think this might be the best transfer window we've ever had in this entire save. We are absolutely stacking this squad out with quality players that are even homegrown Norwegians, and I don't think we could ask for much more than that. There's still one more squad slot available, I think, for a non norwegian We've actually got two of them. That's the beauty of the situation. We could actually bring in two if we still wanted to. It's amazing. Oh, surely this is the year that we give Mulder a freaking good run for their money. I'm excited, my friends. And we still got Europe to come later, too. In case anyone's wondering on how we've managed to find so many match 
better players this year than our recent years. Basically, I've changed my scouting strategy for the year. And that's mostly by just, if I see any kind of okay players in our scouting inbox, I'm just getting one week scout reports on them every single time, every single time it comes through. Mostly just ignoring and not really looking at the players, going, right, we'll focus on that later. And it meant that by the end of the window, really, when we cut to this point, I then had a list of, I don't know, we were sort of rotating through about 100 odd players that my recruitment team, not me manually scouting, that was actually the scouts themselves finding players, that I've just kind of gone, yep, 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 yep. Whereas before, what I would end up doing is I'd look at the occasional player, but most of them would get discarded and we'd go back around again. But that meant when you got to the start of the window, you still had a lot of the scouting to do. We're doing all the scouting preemptively and we're, we're reaping the rewards of it massively during this window. The window hasn't even technically opened yet domestically and we've pretty much done all of our business already and now have time to find some cherry on top potential signings to make this squad even better. I'm so excited. Okay. Excellent news. So Koki Kawamoto is happy to stay at the club. No other clubs are interested. It's really weird. So we got that massive raft of bids the moment that he won Asian Player of the Year. I stalled them for a week. I then rejected them all at once. He then complained. And not one club has put a bid in on him ever since then. He did get a tiny wage bump. But it's really weird that not one club bid on him over the last, like, month. But now Koki's happy to stay. We're in damn good shape now. Uh, now that he's pucked his ideas up a little bit. But look at that. 24 and 23 for Japan. And in even better news, it's a youth intake that's... You know what? It's average. It's not a golden generation. But remember, our squad is better. And it looks like we might have just got another absolutely stunning goalkeeper. Ole Christian Varga. Um, interesting. And also Olvik here. We'll have a quick, la look, quick little look. He's a bit good, isn't he? Like, okay, he has 18 eccentricity. And honestly, from the look in his eyes, it's worrying that he feels like he could be a serial killer at the same time. I mean, we then again, it's his Nordic Nomads would it put out, wouldn't put it past us. To have these kind of attributes at a base level for at 15 is, well, I don't know who I could compare him to. Someone like maybe Mateusz Johansson, honestly. Uh, he's not as good as Johansson, I don't think, but he's still a bloody fantastic goalkeeper. It's two-star current ability. We've just basically got a backup keeper. I can sell Armisen now because he wants to leave. And we can just bring Ole Christian Varga straight into the squad as our backup keeper. What a time to be alive. And also good and feeling. I don't know. Maybe if he really puts the effort in and he is a perfectionist, one day he could be more than a feeling. I'll have to sell him to a team based in Boston. So I've slapped Ole Christian Vorge into the squad straight away because of course I have. Also, now that he's joined us, he's officially now five-star potential. <laughs> what is it with Trom certain goalkeepers? I swear to God. Bologna have offered to loan Armisen back to us and I'm kind of like, no, no, lads. It's fine. You keep him. Don't worry about it. He'd be very interested. Would he? No. Okay, so I think this might be our final signing. Um, this is Pedro Mourinho. No relation. Obviously, spelled differently. He could play striker, or he could play in the middle. And I kind of like the idea of him playing there. And I think, you know what? Because Porto probably let us have him real cheap on a loan. Oh, hang on. He's no longer listed for loan. That's worrying. The loan would cost 200 grand. We're paying 500 quid a week. It's got an optional fee. Don't care. I honestly think that that's probably good business for us here, just to get another stonkingly good player in. Fill that final squad slot with Pedro Mourinho, and then just to the moon, hopefully, this season. I'm also tempted to pick up this guy, Pontus Skoglund, uh, from Bromma Poikinat, because he's available for £950,000, and I feel like he's a really solid young defender who will be good for the future. He's not really one for now, but I feel like we've got to get him while, get him while he's hot or cold, because Sweden, but look at this. I mean, there's quality there, and nobody else seems to want him. He's handed in a transfer request. We need to get on this guy quickly. Bologna have offered to loan him back to us again. I'm like, please just take him. Boom. Pontus Skoglund in as well. I'll get him straight on. Well, I say aggression train. It's not really much you can do to train aggression other than train the position. I think for 900k, he's a pretty good signing, honestly. Impact's up. High wage, but I felt I had to be. I just think he's a good quality player to be fair. And as a wide centre-back as well, with that crossing and dribbling, oh, oofy. And last but not least, we're going to get Mourinho in as well. And that's going to pretty much complete our transfers, I'd say. Um, still got Europe to come, though. Can we just talk about how Shamrock Rovers just knocked out Athletic Bilbao from the Europa Conference League? How are they doing this? They can't do shit in my other save. Incredible scene. So Valencia are through. Shamrock Rovers, Besiktas, Young Boys, Icor, Napoli, which I don't think we'd be able to get potentially. Rosenborg, hilariously, and Braga. Okay. So, let's just run you down what we could get. There is basically everybody's completely random here. So, it's Napoli. Well, you can see the ones on the right. So, you can see those. It's Napoli, Mulder, Young Boys, Braga, Esbia, Shamrock Rovers, Us, and Icor. And then this is the other side of the draw. Young Boys, it could have been worse. Uh, it could have been better. 
but it does feel like a tight. Have we already beat Young Boys before, or did they knock us out of the Champions League before? Four Norwegian sides in the knockouts of the Europa Conference League. Two of them are playing each other. Okay, match day, Europa Conference League. Uh, we're going to do the first leg as a sort of mini live comm, and the second one as a proper one. Um, we're just going to jump in, see how this tactic lines up. Scooping across in. Oh, that's so much space, and it's 1 0 to Young Boys. Young Boys 1, Tromso 0, Gustavo Leguizamo with the goal, just across straight into the box. Nobody gets near it, and it's 1 0, Young Boys. Pretty crap first half, haven't hit the target yet. It's still been pretty average. Like, Young Boys haven't been great either, but we've not had a single shot on target. It's just been an absolute no strike. The strikers aren't doing it. I've moved Dilly back to being a deep line forward again, just to see if he can get anything more out of him over the final 25 minutes here. Um, see if that is the, the difference. And maybe the double advance forward just is not going to work for this lineup. Dilly. Space around the side for Rakic. Around the side for Kawamoto. Good save. First shot on target of the game for us. Oh, here we go. Rakic. Lisa. Around the side for Berger. Hansen has gone a bit wide here. Gets the shot, but blocked. Come on, interception. Somebody get a touch on this ball. Oh, look at the space. Don't you dare. Are you joking? It's going to be Young Boys 2, Thromson nil, And we've had chances today, as usual. Uh, it's a very even game honestly, and we're somehow going to lose it by two goals to nil. The one shot on target was the biggest problem there, but that was still a very even match between the two sides, and we should have done better, but but I don't think two advanced forwards is a solution. We had both of them on 6.2s by the time the second half came around. No, nobody was getting deep enough to create chances because they were both trying to run in behind, but nobody was playing those passes because they need that extra. Uh, I like the idea of Lisa, though, as the deep line forward, perhaps, though, because he can do the role and maybe alternate with the other guys, perhaps, because I think he is what we kind of need there. Final game. We can still turn this around. I've switched the role back to being deep line forward on support. I think against really crappy teams, two advanced forwards could potentially work when you're just getting overloaded. But even when we maintained a lot of possession, it just didn't feel right with the way we were playing. However, I do think Lisa is actually an extremely good deep line forward and could do the role, maybe actually feels that Indistal mold better than he did because he's still good in the air and he's actually got finishing ability, which is what Indistad lacked. So that could be the key for us, honestly. I, I really do like him. And I think that would have free up the space in the league anyway for Martina, uh, sorry, for Mourinho to play in that centre midfield role instead. And we'll just rotate around Dilly and Kawamoto in the other one. I'll do a selection of ice anyway. Let them see what they want to do here. They want to change the back line. Now they want to bring in, keep Dilly there, but I actually want to do Christopher Lisa there and have someone else in the centre of midfield instead. But given how well Lee Dilly's done in the Europa Conference League this season, I want to start him today instead of Kawamoto on the left-hand side of our strike force and see if this makes us look any better. But we simply can't keep this up, miss, this missing every chances thing up much longer. Um, but I'm almost starting to, I, I, I'm actually building a bad tactic for my Treaty United save that basically focuses purely on set pieces, long range shots and low quality chances to see if it's really effective. And if it is, I'll be really disappointed, honestly, in the match engine itself. But that's, that's for another story. As today, we have a two got like one nil would have been fine coming back here. But at 2-0, we have a lot of work to do. And I just don't know if we've got it in us to do the job over Young Boys today. Steenson, nice one. Lisa, round the side. Oh, hang on. Steenson's onto it. Good save. He should have been bombing into that space then. But oh well, Rakic. Jesse Rakic. Oh, what a goal. Long Ranger, of course, but there you go. Tromsa 1, Young Boys 0. We're back in this tie. Great goal from Jesse Rakic. Start as you mean to continue. Back up by Fadira. Rakic round the side. And Dilly's onto it. Good save again from Moreira, but this is much, much better. I think mean, we're doing our best in this game and playing really, really well. But I feel like that first leg is going to be what kills us in this tie. <laughs> such such is life and much like it was against Aberdeen last time around. It's been quite a good start to the second half from Young Boys, annoyingly. Oh, breakaway chance, though. Jesse Rakic can have a little dribble here if he wants to. He's got space. He has to pick the right pass. He's found Lisa. Lisa's throw. And he scored. He's actually scored. Trumps are two. Young boys nil. Well, that is a very big chance that probably would have been missed. But Christopher Lisa has scored and it's 2-0. Whips it through. Rakic! Saved again. I know this one would have been an insanely long episode, but I hope you've had a good time because I'm enjoying it. Badson over the bar. We deserve this win and we deserve to win this tie, honestly. And I want to see him do it. What a pass for Rakic. What a ball in for Kawamoto. What a brilliant goal. If this is onside, that is absolutely gorgeous. We'll see. What is this? Trumps are... Look at this brilliance. Jonsson... Oh, no, it's... Was it Burnson? No, I think it is Johnson. This little run from Rakic picks him out. Rakic then holds the ball, drops it around the side. Kawamoto off the bench. Brilliant finish. Thrums to three. Young boys nil. And we deserve that mm, amazingly. Reader now. A chance for Bar for young boys. Their first shot on target is a free kick in the air. Are you joking? Apologies if the face cam died there. Um, I would have smashed it otherwise. I just... Uh, we've been comfortably the better side on the night. Um, and we have won the game 3-1 currently. So I guess that kind of does play into it. In fairness, Kawamoto, though, can he just shift an angle maybe? Find the side for Lisa! He's done it again. It's 4-1 Tromsø in the 91st minute. Christopher Lisa's second goal of the match. And wow. Although holding onto the ball isn't the worst idea. Rakic... Oh, what a goal. He's done it again. How are we freeing him up for these all of a sudden? It's 5-1 to Tromsø. Jesse Rakic with two absolute screamers. Needless to say, 
to get into that position, throw it away, and then come back again after that, that's hella fortitude. Trump's a five, Young Boys one. Wow, what a result. Lisa and Rakic were stunningly good in this game. Jesse Rakic gets a 10 out of 10. Kawamoto was great off the bench as well. I mean, the front three are just looking excellent at this point. The defense looked really solid. Uh, Johansson unfortunately did concede the only goal on the shot on target but that is so much better and makes me very excited about our chances this season wow what a win right here we go quarter and semi-finals let's just crack on and see what we're gonna get bam <laughs> tromsa versus molder in the europa conference league quarterfinals imagine if we got the winner of this <laughs> and who would we get the winner of that. Are you joking? That's incredible. Uh, so yeah, it's an all Norwegian quarterfinal, which could then potentially lead to an all Norwegian semi-final if we were to progress. We actually have a shot here, I think, at getting to a Europa League, a Europa Conference League final with that draw, that side of the draw. Holy God, what a what an episode. I'm absolutely taken aback by that. Right. Um, okay. So obviously there's a bit of a gap in between there. We'll be coming back. We'll obviously be coming back with the Europa. I know that the league is important, but come on. You want to see us play against Mulder in the Europa Conference League knockouts. Come on, that's fun, right? Uh, you can see what I mean about the friendlies. <laughs> but yeah, it didn't work for us. But that second leg, we were absolutely stunning. And if we play like that in the league, most teams are worse than young boys in our league. We should be able to absolutely have a crack at the title this year. I'm excited. I know this has been extremely long. But I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, drop a like if you have. That would really mean the world to me uh, if you could drop a like. Just even if you don't, just do it this one time. If you can get like 300 on this video, just because it's been a real roller coaster for me, that would be gorgeous of you. Um, and of course, if you are new to the channel and you have enjoyed this, then do subscribe uh, for more goodies coming up this season. We'll be trying to win the league, and you never know, maybe European silverware. Imagine winning that before the league. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I will see you guys very, very soon indeed. Hold your gun, Capybara. Bye bye.